Here's the truth of the matter. You're going to make money off of crypto games embracing play to earn. You're going to feel good about yourself donating to founders by supporting crypto games that have 53 years of Web2 experience with top gaming companies. I'm sure you've heard this a million times before, but zero crypto knowledge or care. And yet they've raised $10 million. So good for them. Good for them. They're going to go ahead and make a bunch of cash off of you. But it's okay because they're they're building product and and you can feel good about yourself knowing that they'll they'll be living the caviar, ribeye, medium rare, maybe blue rare depending on what they want lifestyle for the rest of their lives because of this project. And and there's also projects out there that have done things. For example, we've got a block here that at TGE their launch failed because of a painfully slow claim process, which is borderline unethical. Sneaky locking of tokens. This is Sam Stefanini here, right here. Very underwhelming play to earn rewards and allowing an allegedly, okay, allegedly here, 800% over allocated investment round. How disgusting is this? Disgusting. Locking of tokens by going ahead and telling people in big buttons, oh, you can lock your tokens for more rewards, but the actual base claim is much smaller. There are nearly unethical practices happening in the crypto gaming space that people are completely fine with. But the second that I introduce something, like for example, Notcoin, that has taken the space by storm, a $1.8 billion coin with a roadmap that looks like this. It looks like absolutely nothing. And it looks like nothing because it is nothing. And that is something that people need to embrace more in this crypto space. That perhaps it's not about how complex an economy is or about how insane the gameplay needs to be for something. Maybe we could take a page out of, for example, Axie Infinity, a game which very clearly did not look or play the best. Maybe at the time when we're talking about crypto games, sure. But right now, in traditional gaming standard, it didn't look the best. But it absolutely embraced everything that it needed to embrace to have incredible growth back in 2021. And sure, by some standards, people will have called this a failure. But in today's standards, even today, Axie Infinity has some of the highest daily active user counts out of any crypto game out there right now. And they have some of the highest market capitalization and trading volumes. We even have Pixels Online, which also embraced, you know, the play to earn, you know, sphere here. And they're at a $306 million market cap. And I find it kind of shocking that this is the case because they have the most daily active users in the entire crypto space right now for gaming by a long shot. And it's because they've decided to just embrace what makes the crypto gaming space so pure and so good. It's the hyper-financialization of assets. This is something that has been coming for a really long time. You look at online gaming, online gambling, online, a lot of things, and they're all trending toward the same thing. Financialization of assets. This has been something that when I looked at the Play to Earn documentary three years ago, this was my onboarding to Axie Infinity, I saw clear as day that this was what they were going for. You actually earn some tokens in game. I mean, this is 12 seconds into this documentary here, talking about the play to earn revolution happening in Axie Infinity. And this was what made Axie Infinity so successful years ago. So when people are covering their investment thesis to specific gaming ecosystems, it's not about the most beautiful application that's coming out or the most beautiful game that's there, or maybe the game that has the longest white paper with the most complicated economics professors that are trying to figure this out. Maybe it's about going and looking at a white paper seeing it completely blank, tapping with whatever bots you've got or whatever's going on, and just taking the space for what it is. Because a lot of people, they look at my videos and, and they go, oh, but you're a grifter because you keep talking about the financialization of things and you don't talk about the gameplay as much. It's because maybe the reason we're in crypto gaming is not for the gaming only per se, but very much a majority of it is the crypto part. The reason I don't call it Web3 Gaming and the reason that on analytics, Web3 is falling off as a search term, this is happening, you could search this yourself, 
is because crypto gaming is the reason people are in crypto gaming it's not for the blockchain aspect that's complicated that's annoying at that point you might as well just call it gaming and screw the web3 gaming term it's just gaming at that point the reason people called it that is because they wanted some kind of excuse for some odd reason to get into a space raise a buttload of money but not actually care about what makes the space good in the first place they're trying to fix something that to be honest doesn't even really need to be fixed it's very much an ongoing cycle kind of thing and maybe you don't believe me maybe you believe that you know gaming needs to be the most complicated thing in the world but if you think about most of these gaming coins out here what is the utility for let's say for example here gala what's the utility for gala right now what can you use gala for you could use gala for buying uh you know assets and nfts on what dead games that are just going to lose you money i'm sure most people are probably not going to do that <laughs> let's be honest most people are buying gala because they want the coin to go up that's why they want to buy gala or they want to buy gala because um they have been promised some things four years ago that still haven't materialized that is that's not even important to this conversation the important part is that there's essentially no utility to 99.9% .9 of all of these cryptocurrencies in the gaming space and if we're honest with ourselves meme coins are essentially crypto gaming coins or you know utility coins in general that have decided you know what we're going to cut the bs we're just going to have quote unquote fun or whatever we call it here these days and we're just going to trade and that's why this industry has grown so incredibly fast. I mean, you could look at so many assets in the space. I mean, you could look at some legacy ones like Dogecoin. People will judge it all day by, oh, but you know, Elon Musk appeared on SNL and this coin hasn't gone up since then. But look at where it was before. It is incredible the performance that some of these coins have had. Incredible. I mean, Shiba, look at it. Incredible performance since the beginning of its inception. You couldn't even see the graph. When it went ahead and launched the first time, you look over here, dog and ruins, just incredible performance across the border with meme coins. And it's because they're simply trading these assets to just trade these assets. It's the hyper financialization of this industry that Vitalik Buterin uh, infamously, very recently roasted celebrity coins like Iggy Azalea's mother coin. And yet you look at Ethereum and, you know, Ethereum's kind of doing its thing, whatever. I'm sure it's going to go to all time highs. We all love Ethereum, right? then we look at like i don't know mother coin and personally i think that the industry has chosen to just back mother coin <laughs> you know what i mean like people are just backing things that they think are fun that they think are catching attention that they think are going to make change happen and that's exactly what we need to see more of in the crypto gaming space we don't need to see some boring professor that's 45 years old that has 300 years of experience and i don't know potato farming or something and has wrote in 37 research papers on it going off and making a crypto game and then like, totally rugging people because he's gotten most of the supply for himself and just, just totally dumping it all over the place maybe what we need is an embracing of what the industry is and what makes it great and and what makes the last 50 years of video game revenue so just incredible i mean you look over here at how video games have grown over the past 50 years and it's only until very recently that it's absolutely exploded in growth. I mean, I'm talking about just exploded in growth. We saw some things over here that might seem a little bit interesting to you. In 1983 to 1985, the oversaturation of low-quality games crashed the industry as console revenues fall over 90% from 1983 to 1985, right here. And I think this is kind of what's happening right now. We had the first boom of play to earn when we had crypto kitties, and then we calmed down for a couple of years, and then we exploded again with the Axie Infinity play to earn boom. And now we're getting this oversaturation of what are i don't even know what you call them are they crypto gaming projects they're gaming projects that are entering the crypto space and and raising a bunch of money in the crypto space but don't actually have a plan to onboard their cryptocurrency to their game they're just saying that if our game that has a likelihood of 90 percent plus to fail you know succeeds then you're going to make a bunch of money off of us essentially 
So we're seeing that right now, 90% crashes in crypto gaming coins across the board. We're having a bit of a pump here because some assets like Pixels Online have gotten some traction and we have begun to see some form of play to earn with Parallel and Prime come up and that has been positive for the space. And this is what I think is the breakout that's going to happen in crypto gaming. It's going to be when people get tired of all these coins that come out that just don't really have any purpose and are pretty much meme coins, but we're pretending they're not meme coins. They launch with, with a high FTV, low float. So there's only like, what, 5, 10% of the supply out there. And most of it is just gotten, you know, at TGE by their venture capital investors or, or maybe even the team or who even knows what their terms are. And then boom, we're just supposed to be fine with that. I, I think that is that is what made last cycle so good. That people had focused on the play to earn narrative. I see it, an enormous boom in play to earn coming. Enormous boom in play to earn coming. And it has been more than clear to me as all of the crypto games that have actually gotten traction over the past year have all embraced play to earn. And this is going to lead to our next boom. Is it gonna be the end of our journey? I don't think it's going to be the end of our journey, but it sure as hell is going to be a hell of a ride to go back all the way up there. And so when I am looking at the the next 100, 1,000 X, then the next time I could begin to use, make $100 per day on a crypto thumbnail, right? Because that's, that's what a lot of people are looking for, right? The truth is that the next time you're going to see that will be sometime this cycle, and it will be through ecosystems that embrace play to earn. And right now, to me, it seems like, once again, Ronin is winning because they haven't changed their mission statement. They've continued doing what they've been doing for so long. And you look at them through market cap lenses, and they're doing so well. And it is because they have the users. They have people that are genuinely interested in their ecosystem. You look at some coins. Well, Prime hasn't been so hot lately. But, I mean, look at their performance since the start of the year. They have also been doing so well at a $446 million market cap. These are coins that have decided to embrace the space versus trying to do something that is totally different and complicated and is supposed to change the world and breaking news. That's the problem we have right now. It's the problem we have right now. So let me know your thoughts in the comments section. When it comes to this, you know, what coins are you looking for? I think we need to just be honest with ourselves and I think it'll make the space better as a result. Until the next time, stay classy, and that's all.